Whether it's jump scares, shocking reveals, dramatic crafting of a sense of overwhelming dread, or just a particularly gory and garish sequence, horror revels in freaking us all out. Here, our focus is on those certain moments, certain pieces of imagery, and certain shots that left audiences doused in a cold sweat of discomfort, and those moments that never fail to creep us out, even on repeat viewings. So, with that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here are 10 horror movie shots that will send a chill down on your spine. Number 10. The Head Turns, Hell House LLC. Found footage offering Hell House LLC takes place in the aftermath of a tragedy at a haunted house attraction in Aberdeen, New York. An opening night, 15 customers and all but one member of staff died in mysterious circumstances. As ever the case in the horror genre, some budding filmmakers decide to delve into this catastrophe and attempt to discover what really happened on that fateful night. Assisting them in their documentary, our film crew have managed to track down the one surviving staff member from this attraction. And she just so happens to have footage of how the haunted house itself came to be put together. Hell House LLC is full of plenty of proper good scares, but the most unnerving moment of the picture revolves around footage where two staff members find themselves in the basement of the old creepy hotel that's being used for this haunted house. There we see three creepy as flub mannequin clowns. But they're mannequins, right? Just good old, non-moving, non-real, non-evil mannequins. <sighs> in a brilliant, disturbing shot though, when our two staff has turned around to have one last look at these mannequins, the trio of Harlequin's heads have all eerily tilted to be looking directly at our now terrified protagonists. Uh, no thank you. Number 9. Henry's Gonna Henry. Henry, portrait of a serial killer. As the movie's title alludes to, Michael Ruckus Henry, loosely based on real-life serial killer Henry Lee Lucas, is a deranged figure who gets his kicks by killing any man, woman, or child he so wishes. And not just that, but our central rogue is joined by his pal Otis as the film plays out, the pair carrying out all kinds of unspeakable atrocities. Surprisingly, Henry eventually shows a softer, almost redemptive side towards the film's close. So much so, he ends up butchering his best friend after he finds Otis sexually assaulting his own sister, that being Becky. With that, Otis's body is dumped, Henry and Becky ride off into the sunset, and all looks somehow well with the world. Still, after Henry and Becky take up an overnight stay at a local motel, complete with seemingly becoming a loving couple, Henry, portrait of a serial killer, has a soul-crushing final shot. Just as we think that Henry has changed his ways, we see him dispose of a bloodied suitcase which supposedly contains the dead body of poor Becky. Number 8. Michael Stalks Annie, Halloween 2, 2009 Unlike Nancy Loomis' iteration of the character in John Carpenter's Halloween, Danielle Harris' take on Annie Brackett actually managed to survive Rob Zombie's first Halloween film. Despite surviving Michael Myers' initial onslaught on Haddonfield though, the shape would hunt Annie down and finish the job in Halloween 2. Having dispatched the police officer's guard in the Brackett home, Myers, unbeknownst to Annie, makes his way inside the family abode. It's here where there's a truly eerie shot as Michael stands behind the clueless Annie while she brushes her teeth. The whole sequence has an uneasy, unnerving nature to it, from the moment we see Michael outside the Braggett house, and then as we realise what's about to happen, or while Annie has zero idea of the brutality that awaits her. While the death of Annie isn't shown in a linear way here, Zombie instead chillingly intercuts footage of the death of Annie with moments where Laurie Strode is shown checking on her best friend. All bloody, all traumatic, and a shockingly visceral demise, even by Rob Zombie's standards. Number 7. The Upside Down. Hell is where the home is. In Orson Oblovitz's Hell is where the home is, the focus is on two couples who hire a luxury house for a weekend of fun. Once Farouz about comes a knocking on their door, position herself as a neighbour who needs to borrow a phone due to car trouble, the reputation of Balk has you thinking she has sinister intentions. With our central characters likewise presuming the worst from Farouza, hey, maybe they'd seen the maniacal ways in the craft. It turns out she really is just a neighbour who has a knackered car. Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, we only find this out after she fatally, accidentally, has a wedge of glass rammed through her eye. By this point, though, our protagonists have already called the cops due to their belief that Farouza Balk's unnamed character is a wrongin. But what lies ahead is revealed that one of the local cops is actually after some dodgy pictures that are somewhere in this house. In a truly unique shot, and to show that this cop and his cohorts mean business, viewers are treated to an immense upside down visual after one of the non-corrupt cops has a machete wedged in his head. From there, this cop falls backwards as the camera perspective flips to represent the viewpoint of this poor fella. It's a brilliant shot, but also one that's extremely grim. Number 6. Man in the Mask Watches On – The Strangers in the case of Brian Bettino's The Strangers, it's Kristen and James who find themselves as the unlucky couple in the crosshairs of Man in the Mask, Dollface, and Pinup Girl. Specifically, these on the rocks lovebirds are at James's family summer house when they hear an ominous, initially gentle, rap rapping at their front door. The first knock is merely just someone at the wrong house looking for the wrong person, though of course it would soon become apparent that this visitor is indeed one of the film's trio of killers. By the time we realise what's happening, James has left the house in order to buy some cigarettes, and it's here where the strangers delivers its most unsettling shot. As the unaware Kristen tries to ring James, the audience slowly spots the presence of Man in the Mask lurking quietly in the shadows. With that, The Strangers fully sets its stall out, and Horror Hounds knew that it was going to be a long all night for Kristen and James. Number 5. The Bullet Wound – The Amityville Horror 2005 2005's redo of The Amityville Horror is largely a run-in-the-mill remake, likely most remembered for a shredded Ryan Reynolds catching the eye as an often shirtless George Lutz. Of course, The Amityville Horror revolves around the Lutz family moving into a new home in Amityville, New York. The kicker? It's that the property was going cheap due to a gnarly set of murders having taken place there one year earlier. Those murders were carried out by Ronald DeFeo Jr, who slaughtered his family after supposedly being commanded to do so by a sinister presence in the house. When a slew of spooky happenings starts to terrorise the Lutz family, the big question is whether Ryan Reynolds' George will follow in the murderous footsteps of DeFeo. As part of these spooky happenings, young Chelsea Lutz claims to have been visited by a pal named Jody. Eerily, Jody is also the name of the youngest child killed by Ronald DeFeo Jr. And when babysitter Lisa mocks the Lutz kids for Jody, she finds herself trapped in the closet with the one and the same spirit she was poking fun at. In a disgusting sequence, Jody, who was fatally shot in the head, forces Lisa to put her finger in the bullet wound on her head, complete with stomach churning, squelching sound effects. Yeah. Number 4. Nobody puts Mike in the corner. The Blair Witch Project The Blair Witch Project showcased a rather unfortunate foray into the woods of Burkittsville for student filmmakers Heather, Mike and Josh. On the hunt to find the Blair Witch, or Rustin Parr, a vagrant who'd murdered seven children in those woods, our trio of budding Scorseses end up biting off far more than they could chew. With Josh having vanished, his two pals go in search of him, all after having found a severed tongue, teeth, bloodstained clothes, and generally been tormented by something unseen but sinister. Of course, by this point, it's been established that Rustin Parr also killed his victims in pairs, with one forced to stand in the corner of the room. So, when Heather and Mike rush to what they believe is Josh's screams, they end up in the basement of Parr's old house. From his perspective, we see Mike drop to the floor after being attacked by something, and then Heather arrives shortly after to find Mike standing in the corner, before she too is also attacked. The sight of Mike here truly is an eerie one, with Heather and the audience made well aware what the implications of this fully are. Number 3. That Nurse Scene – The Exorcist 3 The phenomenal Exorcist 3 follows George C. Scott's Lieutenant Kinderman as he dives into a slew of devilish murders that all have the trademarks of the Gemini Killer. Essentially the film's spin on the famed Zodiac Killer, the catch with Gemini is that he's actually been dead for 15 years. For poor Father Karras of the original Exorcist movie, he's back here as a catatonic patient who's possessed by Gemini and also an ominous presence known as The Master, or while Karis is mocked for what happened to young Reagan McNeil in that first Exorcist film. So, that nurse scene then. This comes during the second half of The Exorcist 3, as we watch a nurse investigate a noise from a nearby room. Here, we get a fake jump scare at the reveal of a startled sleeping doctor, then masterfully, just as we and the nurse start to relax, a chilling nun figure exits another room, immediately behind our nurse, with shears pointing 
pointed at the nurse's head as a scene cuts to a shot of a decapitated statue. This is such a brief moment, but genuinely, genuinely, genuinely one of the most jarring scenes in horror history. Number two. Ben Gardner says hello, Jaws. In the case of Steven Spielberg's iconic Jaws, the one moment guaranteed to put a shiver through your soul is the discovery of Ben Gardner's corpse. Granted, Jaws has plentiful scenes of terror, not least the brutal opening act assault on poor Chrissy Watkins, but it's the Gardner reveal shot that is one forever etched into the minds of horror hounds. What makes this moment particularly special is how you can watch Jaws a hundred times, be fully aware each and every time as to what is about to happen, but still be somehow caught off guard in the worst possible way, as the decomposed head of Ben pops out to say hello to the unsuspecting Matt Hooper. To generation after generation, this extremely brief moment has proven to be a chilling, shocking slice of underwater action, all while likewise feeling like some sort of bizarre warm hug of comfort for those longtime Jaws fans. Number 1. The Grim Kick of Reality Speak No Evil Speak No Evil is one of the most numbing, impactful movies of recent years. It's really, really well crafted, but really, really depressing. And things all start so well, with Danish couple Bjorn and Louise and their daughter Agnes becoming pals with Dutch couple Patrick and Karen and their son Abel. Having met on a vacation in Italy, Patrick and Karen extend an invite to their new friends to come and stay with them in the Netherlands for a few days. Taking up this offer, our Danes are soon taken aback by certain elements of their host's hospitality. For instance, Louise is fed meat, despite making it clear she's a vegetarian, and the Dutch couple are uncomfortably hands-on with their affection, and Patrick and Karen generally just do all they can to unsettle their guests. Startlingly, Bjorn and Louise's hesitancy to call out their host's awful behaviour eventually results in their deaths and the kidnapping of their daughter. Because you let me, as Patrick at one point eerily quips to Bjorn. It's revealed that Patrick and Karen operate a sinister operation of befriending parents, killing them, then cutting out their child's tongue as they pass off that child as their own, all then to repeat that process later down the line. For Bjorn and Louise, they end up stripped naked off a remote road where they are stoned to death. The shot of the two, cold and nude as they realise their fate, is a soul sapping image that stays with you long after Speak No Evil ends. Seriously, this is a phenomenal film, but it's one you'll only ever watch once. So that's our 10 horror movie shots that will send a chill down your spine. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give us a follow on Twitter at WhatCultureHorror. While you're there, you can find myself at Culture Left Peg. Most importantly, though, be sure to have the best possible day. Whether you're doing something or whether you're doing absolutely nothing, I hope it goes well for you. And if things aren't going so well, I hope they turn around as soon as possible. I've been Andrew Pollard from What Culture Horror, and I'll catch you down the road.